Right then, back onto the Mark V race car. So there's quite a lot been going on. The Mark VI that Paul's been working on is now stripped of everything that we need off it. We just need to get truck pulled in and get that gone. So some of the stuff that we've had out of it, we're going to keep. So we're going to use the clocks, but we'll probably put the Cosworth dash in front of these here somewhere to do all that stuff. Um, all these dash bits, we're going to keep handbrake, all these dash bits and the dash itself, that's going to be um, getting flocked. Dan's going to do that. We'll put a link to um, his little advert, if he's got one by then, about what he's doing. Steph's sick of doing flocking at SRS, so he's, Dan's going to do it instead. Um, we're not going to use that steering wheel, but we're going to use the full Mark VI column because it's newer, in better condition, not being battered. So bearings are in better nick, so we'll use that one. Um, Dan's just busy working away, balancing wheels with the wet tyres on. So that's these ones. Two Forge. They're, um, they've supplied them in the offset we wanted. We did the measuring last time. We ended up coming back where we wanted like an ET28 as per as we wanted to be. So that's where these are. So we're going to measure up with these ones now, see how much room we've got, what clearance we've got on space, backspacing and on the caliper. And then we'll go from there. So we'll go over and do that in a second. These tyres are just for wet use in the track day trophy, if that's what we're running, or if we're just on a track day. So only on an eight inch rim, so it should be good. So then this is the rest of the stuff that Paul's been pulling out of the Mark VI. So all the wiring is going to have to be stripped back. All the crap we don't need got rid of. And then we'll make it all look nice and neat and uh, clip it up nicely in car. We're going to try and separate that. Cause is that the ABS there, Paul? Yeah, that's the ABS one. So this ABS should plug into our ABS pump but we're going to separate this out into two separate looms. So the ABS is totally standalone to the engine loom, which is totally separate to the car loom. So everything, if you had a problem with one, you're not burning up at all. So all the other little bits that we've put on, just nicked on off it. Wiper motors from this Mark VI. Fuel filter housing, all this sort of stuff. Because if we want to order a part, we'll just use the Mark VI reg rather than the Mark V because the subframes are all the same, stuff like that. So all the nuts, bolts, washers and everything for them are the same. So we'll get on to the wheel fitment. So I need to get this. Hopefully it fits in. Ah, oh, it's the wrong size. It's not going to work. Need a different spigot. We'll 3D print some. I'll get Rob to sort that out. So... This has got the proper bracket, where are we here? The proper bracket and the, um, the spacer behind the disc and everything. So, a bit of plasticine. Stick that to the back of the spoke there. And drive it on. Could bolt it up if really want the tip, but that's, that's good. So, that's tight up against there, and we've got. We got to it back there. So we're going to obviously take into account the tyre width as well, but physical wheel, we've got like 50, 57 mil roughly to the strut. So that's plenty. So then what I need to do, let's make sure that's zero. Pull that back off. Still stuck there. So that is 10 mil. Absolutely bang on what we expected to have with ET28. So I'll do some calculations now and work out what we can do with a nine inch rim. But in theory, I'll try and make sure I get my mass rate doing it in my head. But if we want to try an inch tip rim and not stick out anymore, we're going to have to add 12 and a half mil to offset as well, so we'd end up like an ET40 off, ET40 offset for the centre of the rim 
to be the same. Uh, sorry, for the for the back of the rim to be an inch further back and the, the caliper spacing to be the same. So I'll double check my maths before we publish this, but I'm probably wrong. Um, so yeah, that's good. That'll work. Um, one thing while we're on the spigots, obviously the wrong size for the wheels, I need to sort that out, that's no big deal. But the reason why we're probably going to end up with some custom ones anyway, is this chamfer that these have got on, and once we've got the disc, which this space is going to be nearly flush with front of that, so you're not going to have a ton to get on, obviously. If you look at that, that's sat on the chamfer still. It's not actually centering the wheel. So there's no point having a spigot at all if you're going to do that. So. We'll see how we get on with that anyway, we'll figure that one out later on. It's not a big deal at the minute. So, I need to take that wheel back over to Dan and get that sorted. I need to get the truck in, get this car gone, because Paul's finishing a few bits off on this, and then we're gonna tackle the wiring in one big chunk, but we've got the differentials uh, gonna be here for the gearbox, so that'll be another thing that we'll lay out in a bit. Um, and the gearbox that came out of that car is a spare as well, which that's, kicking about down there and then the front end that we've took off this car is going to be the spare one and the front end we've took off the mark six is going to be the one that we run with so there's just stuff everywhere the mark 16 rack's going to go on the new um on the new subframe when that comes so i think we're pretty much where we need to be um i don't think there's all else to talk about really um so yeah, we'll get this Mark 6 off to the scrapyard in the sky and start cracking with, on with something else. One thing I did forget about, this is a 4-motion sort of Quattro fuel tank. So you can see the difference in this, which a bit gangly to hold. It's got a lump here where the prop shaft normally goes, and obviously rear diffs here. So this is going to fit on a bit better with what we've got planned because the idea is to have the exhaust coming out of the centre so rather than it having to come round round the fuel tank and back in it's going to just go straight out so I think that should look quite good so this one's out of a BKD 4 motion Golf so Mark 5 so we'll just check all the fuel sender and everything's all working properly before we put it in but the good thing about these as well for a race car you've got two small sort of tanks that are linking each other together and keeping the both of these bowls full so when it's sloshing about it's not a big one big tank that's sloshing from one side to the other and getting weight transfer you've got a little bit moving here and obviously it helps you with exhaust so the tcr cars all run four motion stuff the leon's obviously run a four motion tank as well i'd assume it's for that reason i've never had anybody confirm it to me but that's my theory behind it so hopefully that's why so anyway.